armor shield. Oh. I need to look at these counts. Oh my gosh, we actually caught it, dude. I, I didn't even have the counts up. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. Oh my gosh, we did. Hey everyone, I hope the season's treating you well. I was playing a decent amount of Spring Cup uh, right when it was in rotation with Ultra League and I've been playing a little bit with Master League as well and this team has really helped me climb quite a bit. I've consistently getting positive sets, a lot of 4-1s and 5-0s as well. The team comprised of non-shadow Polyrath with Dynamic Punch, important thing to note, uh, Dugong, and Frothorn. And the movesets are pretty important on this one. Flash Cannon you really need for opposing grass types. Polyrath with the non-shadow, I think you're just able to outbulk a lot of different things. Dugong, typically your safe swap in a lot of these scenarios. I was running this team a lot throughout Spring Cup and was able to hit leaderboards with this team pretty early on in the season already. So I'm definitely doing something right, I think. And I'm going to showcase my two most recent sets using this team before I played some more on stream for my patrons. Before we get into the battles, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you'd like private one-on-one -on -one coaching, scrims against me, some of my lead guides and strategies ahead of time, or even tune into my live stream battles, feel free to sign up through the Patreon link down below. Okay, in this first battle, we have a Empoleon lead, and overall, that's really solid. Um, there's a lot of water double grass in the back, and Dugon's pretty much your main reliable counter for grass, especially because Rosary sometimes is in the back. So, first and foremost, I shield Dugong, uh, just because uh, it's usually going to be pretty valuable for the late game. Uh, and then on top of that, um, I try to swap out to my Polyrath just because Polyrath and Ferrothorn are both really good into the Dugong or into the Empoleon, I should say. So it's not really a big deal. Uh, they do throw some energy. Unfortunately, I can't swap it before them, but that's okay. We have the Icy Wind Bank, which is plenty. I catch a Drill Pack, which doesn't seem ideal, but like I said, team is usually pretty good into Empoleon either way. They come in with Roserade as expected. Um, they throw a Weather Ball too, which is really nice. Again, the non-shadow is going to come through pretty nice here. Uh, we grab a shield. We get uh, them to throw some of their energy. And I think, yeah, I come in with the uh, Dugong. Optimize my timing a little bit here. doesn't make a huge difference, but uh, everything accounts for a little bit of something. All right, and at this point in time, yes, double super effective Weather Ball is coming through, but they're double debuffed, non-stab as well. So Frothorn can definitely tank. A uh, really great catch from my opponent right there. Um, but uh, we get for go for the undercharge, and we still have a shield, so puts me in a really good spot. So either way, uh, still able to close out this match. Uh, but like I said, these are just two straight sets back to back, so you'll kind of see how I play against uh, all different team comps, uh, etc. It's probably gonna be some misplays on my end as well. But like I said, the team is really good, so even if you make misplays, sometimes you can still do pretty well. Um, for all, or uh, a bomb snow lead. Uh, Obviously, a bad match for my opponent. They come in with Glissapod. This is actually pretty good for me because Glissapod is actually pretty strong to Polyrath and Dugong. Very strong to Dugong, actually. So, uh, drawing this out is pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to shield once because uh, this Glissapod becomes a huge pain in the butt later if I can't take it out. So, just going to do what I can against this Glissapod. They double shield at this point. So I'm just content on just letting this go. Uh, and then... The bomb still doesn't have a lot of places to go against my backline, so it just really depends on what their third Pokemon is at this point. Uh, they obviously have a Polyrath counter in the back, so Shield's down is not the Ender World for me. Or, sorry, uh, Shield Vanish, Dugon's not the Ender World for me. I feel like it might be a Lantern, which definitely could spell trouble. Uh, we do catch a move, though, which is nice. Uh, ends up being Aerial Ace, which, not a big deal. Um, and they come in a Bomb of Snow as well, so this is kind of interesting. I'm going to shield. I, had, I don't know what's in the back, but I feel like my Dugong's going to be pretty valuable for whatever it is. Um, and yeah, so we're going to get this first Ice Wind off. We can definitely tank an Energy Ball, um, but I want to debuff as soon as I can. I'm just going to throw this right away, if that's the case. Uh, Lantern still has a commit, 
something. Okay, it ends up being a Bruxish, which is kind of wild. Um, don't see this very often. I think this is probably the only Bruxish I saw the entire rotation of Spring Cup. So, yeah, kind of different. But either way, they go for Psychic Fangs debuff, uh, and we get Drill Run, which is nice. Um, I think Abomas is pretty low on health at this point, too. Yeah, so you have to finish it off. Uh, Glissabot is definitely a little bit weird for the team, though, especially in the lead, but just gonna have to figure out a way to play around it. Lantern lead, I've seen a decent amount of, and I've also seen won a lot of these, too. Uh, typically, they don't bait. Sometimes they do, but uh, it's always worth shielding, in my opinion, because you could typically grab at least one of the shields and just farm down with the uh, Frothorn. Uh, so I have time to optimize as well, which is always good. Uh, some people might think you're going for Icy Wind, so I might let it go, but I find the vast majority still shield. But either way, in my opinion, it's not really worth the risk of debuffing with Icy Wind. It's rather, better just to grab a guaranteed shield, and then you can just farm down with Frothorn. Uh, and typically, the energy is going to come in pretty handy. Sometimes you'll pivot out by this health range. I don't know if it actually makes too much sense for them. Uh, but yeah, let's see what they have in the back. A lot of times, it's uh, Rose Raid, so you definitely need the shield advantage if you can. Um... Not a Rose Raid, so Shadow Maw Wow. Pretty bad, but the Flash Cannon does do quite a bit of damage, and the Shield. So this is really nice for me. Obviously, Sludge Wave is going to be a little bit annoying in this situation, so uh, definitely have to watch out for it. Um, but uh, I think, I don't even know if they charge up to it or not. Maybe they didn't. No, they went Acid Spray. Okay, pretty good overall. Uh, Dynamic Punch actually does a decent amount of damage even to Tentacro for Resistance, so uh, not the worst case scenario, all things considered. I'm going to shield up right here. If I could land, yeah, and they go straight for the skull, which is even better. And then if I could go for the Zyndan Punch, it puts me in a pretty good spot. Uh, I don't really want to swap out because I probably lose charge tech priority. I'm not sure. Um, but we get to the Power Whip. Resist the Power Whip, but it's a Shadow Mobile and just happens to be enough. So again, Lantern lead, no problem too. I I've played against pretty much every team comp you could probably imagine in Spring Cup. And overall, I would say that the vast majority of my losses are just my own misplays. Uh, even against bad leads, there's pretty much a way to play out most of them. Uh, there might be a few that uh, aren't playable, but we'll see how that goes. They go straight for Sludge Wave. I definitely shield because uh, I've seen this quite a few times, so it's not really worth letting it potentially go and just like losing Switch because of it. It's from a Shadow Ten of Cruelty on top of that. But also, my uh, Feral Thorns are very good into their dugon so keeping this healthy not a bad idea um again i'm pretty strong into dugon in the back so i'm gonna swap out and draw potentially like a grass type or something uh ends up being a rose raid which is totally fine um honestly i would have had a really great time either way into the rose raid with the dugon but you never know maybe it was like i don't know what i thought it could have been in the back but uh their polygraph maybe i mean their polygraph is my polygraph is probably the best counter for it uh, they go for straight for the Leaf Storm. Uh, this puts you in a really good position overall. I'm going to just shield. Ends up being Weather Ball, but I don't think they get to another move anyway. Uh, because he has another Weather Ball. Uh, yeah, we're just so far ahead at this point. Uh, we could just go straight draw run. No big deal. Uh, so sometimes it's important to pivot. I don't even know if that one was, but I like to just go for it just in case I need the Polyrath for something else. All right. Another Lantern lead. Again, not the best uh for the team let's see what they do uh i think one of these players did bait me with the surf this might be the one no they went straight thunderbolt okay uh pretty good sometimes people try to catch stuff on drill run as well but a lot of times the lantern do stay in so i prefer to just optimize instead of um yeah instead of uh trying to throw in between i guess um okay so this one just straight up lets the move go through which is wild um and I'm thinking, all right, they got to shield this drill run. But no, they uh, let the Icy Wind go through, which is kind of crazy. So, yeah, most Galarian Weezing in this meta are running Overheat and Brutal Swing. So you're in a much better position. And unfortunately, they have a Tropius in the back. So this is kind of tough. Um, because I'm also down a shield. And this matchup is not that clean for, for Althorn, Um And they end up shielding the flash cannon as well so it's kind of tricky because they pretty much outpace me as well on top of that so i can't really risk shielding much and they can let this one go because they know that they just have to shield the ice icy wind their loose con is to not shield to shield that and then don't shield icy wind but we're in a much tougher position and like i said most of my losses pretty much are sometimes misplayed this is going to be a loss i'm pretty sure um, I think if I threw that drill run, got guaranteed a shield, or put this Weezing quite low, maybe would have had a chance. I don't know. This is tough, because if I grab their shield, 
yeah i don't know uh i mean they wouldn't have shielded i guess but um i think you know me going for the icy one where i could just go and guarantee the damage or drill run or grab the shield would have probably been better uh but that being said we do go for one like i said uh this team is very very strong for me overall i was able to go positive in a lot of my sets these battles are from last week actually i just haven't had time to upload but uh so the elo you're seeing of my opponents uh were considerably considered much higher back when it happened shadow victory bell something you don't see very often but uh yeah they are gonna have the shields um Frothorn's pretty good into this overall most are not running sludge bomb which is the main thing you have to watch out for it was a tentacle on the lead and we saw before that polygraph's not terrible into it so my only fear right now is really that they have another grass type in the back but um but yeah we're gonna take out this shadow victory bell see what they have uh and they come in venusaur yeah so this is not amazing for me but um the frothorn is not terrible here uh we're going for a slight undercharge just so you potentially get to icy wind i think that might have been eh. well honestly if they put me a little bit lower here it's actually not the Enderworlds uh because it's less for the venusaur farm we still get to icy wind which is huge that debuff is going to come in really handy for this uh for this back end matchup uh again flash cannon is uh really important to have uh for these kind of situations thunder just doesn't give you too much and you can see sludge bomb debuff just not going to be enough uh flash cannon should be close to one shotting at this point not exactly sure if it does uh this is non shadow but um if not yeah it does take it up all right uh pelper lead uh, like i said these are just straight battles two sets in a row so sometimes the leads are pretty bad and uh, there's still a lot of play into it typically speaking i do say swap the dugong but in this situation i feel like the frothorn say swaps a little bit better in this situation so we're going to swap to it um they are coming in tropius which again is kind of annoying for my team um didn't really expect to see double flyer just because it's fairly weak to stuff like dugon but i guess they just stay in into dugon leads um just ice leads in general because it's only neutral uh okay so this is probably not worth shielding in my opinion i'd rather just shield up the dugon and preserve it i think it's, I think it's gonna have a lot of play uh but we'll see how much play really it has uh and then they hard pivot to the pelipper which is kind of odd um seems like a pretty likely hurricane so i'm going to shield it um so dugon maybe has some more play in the back end or maybe the polywrath is really strong either way i think that's my play is i just gonna do what i can with the dugon and kind of force him to be in a bad situation so switch timer should be misaligned quite a bit uh i doubt they come in tropius here but uh funny enough they did so I should have just thrown the Icy Wind, um, and I would have been in a much better position. Like I said, the losses here are my misplays, right? I don't know why they came in Tropius, because I had almost an Icy Wind and a half loaded. Uh, more than an Icy Wind and a half loaded. But at this point in time, like I would have been in a really good spot, because yeah, I would have been able to throw one before they get the Leaf Blade energy. It would have been debuffed or shielded, and then yeah, it would have been a different story. So again, we lost there, but more so my misplay than anything else. Um, yeah, there's a lot of play there. But uh, again, that's not a bad thing for the team, at least. Uh, if you play better than me, you'll, you'll definitely be climbing even faster. Uh, for Alligator lead, pretty good for me, all things considered um whole team's pretty strong into it but power is definitely the strongest and they come in tropius and sometimes i pivot out but in this situation it's not really worth pivoting out uh we have the dugong in the back which can be very, very good into the tropius and they actually throw the energy they could have probably gone for the full farm down but they probably lost track of energy counts and then now they have the bomb of snow this is always good uh unlikely they bait me in this situation so i think i just stay in i don't know uh or force them to double shield if I force them to shield, I think I'm in a pretty good spot. Or I could just double shield their energy ball. I don't even know if I need the Frothorn throw at this point. Um, yeah, it's probably worth shielding the energy ball. Uh, yeah. Or I just let this one go. This is fine. Um, we're able to survive it. They're double debuffed. I think I got debuffed, but that's fine. One Icy Wind should be enough, and they're going to quit out. So they don't even, we don't even need the Frothorn. throw. Yeah, in that situation, I don't really want like, to give them extra energy by swapping my Frothorn throw in that situation. All right, another Dugon lead, fantastic for us, and they come in the Tentacruel. Important to know is how long it takes to get to that Sludge Wave, uh, which I believe is nine Poison Traps. So something to keep track of. 
They go Scald, so uh, it seems like unlikely they have Sludge Wave, and they are. They're not going to go and throw it. They're going to straight Scald at this point, so we're just going to over farm to max energy and then throw the Power Whip. No optimization needed at this point because it doesn't really matter. They're, they're not going to get to that move unless they shield. And then they actually come in with a Tropius. So this is actually really good because now they're showing the third. We definitely get alignment in this situation. Um, so I'm going to throw another flash cannon uh they shield which is even better um this is worthwhile because that's a decent amount of energy or a decent amount of damage and then even they swapped her their own duron afterward i could just over farm and just come out with icy wind on the polygraph as well uh so they're dumping quite a bit of energy but i think they're probably going to still swap after this and they do uh, this is pretty good for me uh, I could tank one of these moves, no problem. I think I'm going to throw the next one on charge attack priority because I know I survived one drill run. And if they spend the final shield on the Dugon, I have the Icy Wind. Uh, or, yeah, Icy Wind on the Dugon. Yeah, it's wild. And they both have the same move. <laughs> so I got confused for a second. Uh, but yeah, we get to Icy Wind, maximize our energy here, force their final shield. They just let it go because they realize I guess it's over at that point. So uh, another Empoleon lead. Empoleon leads are really good for the team just because the whole team's pretty strong into it uh again some of the trevenant safe swap always have to watch out for the second grass in the back so we're gonna do the same play as we did before shield one seed bomb throw icy winds uh hope they burn out their own switch timer a little bit um they actually shield which is a little odd to me um do i shield as well no i don't just because rosary is kind of annoying so uh it's probably not worth uh ooh, this is getting a little dicey i don't know maybe maybe i should have shielded the earlier one or gone, not gone for the farm down either way we go for the pivot um and then they have a tropius in the back so pretty good uh it is the double grass uh we definitely need the dugong for sure um i can even potentially come in with the frother i think that's what i'm going to do soak up the energy oh we get to another ice wind that's massive they have to throw leaf blade pretty much blind into my oh wait no they just let it go oh well it's pretty much over at this point um i go for a little cheeky icy wind debuff i mean if they even they don't even if they do shield or don't shield it's pretty much over um but yeah we have the frothorn to finish it out and this is going to do a lot of damage so like i said team really was really strong four and more oh four and one in the first sets this is about to be another four and one uh back to back um four one sets and i was able to hit uh, ace pretty or veteran i should say pretty quickly 2500 this was right before that uh, my very next set i played on stream on last friday and hit veteran right away with the team so overall a really really strong team for spring cup definitely give it a shot if you haven't uh it's for the most part simplest to use definitely use this uh video as kind of guidance for how to play out a lot of different matchups stay tuned for my next video it's going to be one featuring master league which took me a lot of time to kind of figure out how to run a proper team in it but i think i've cracked the code a little bit so be on the lookout for that get your palkia origin ready because they only looking even stronger now thank you all for watching if you like this video feel free to give it a like and share subscribe for future content hit that notification bell to get alerted right when i post a new video and i'll catch you all next time